Okay, okay, okay. Welcome to Metabolic Lectures. Guys, we're going to carry on the topic from last time. We were talking about strokes and the different types of uh, syndromes that are involved uh, with the brain stem and the circle of Willis. So today we're going to talk about Wallenberg syndrome. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on that little bell down there somewhere. Okay, so Wallenberg syndrome. Again, we're going to deal with mnemonics. We're going to deal with exactly what's going on. This is a tough, tough uh, topic for a lot of people doing step two CK, step one and step three. Uh, we're going to break it down and try to help you guys get as many points as possible. Okay, so first things first, if you haven't seen the previous lecture, make sure you check it out. It's called Circle of Willis, uh, Introduction to Strokes, Part One or something like that. Basically, when we talk about Wallenberg syndrome, all right, that's our discussion today. We are talking about the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, pica. Pica's affected. Now, as we know, pica involves these three nerves. It's the base of the medulla. It goes all the way to the back here where you actually have the cerebellum. Now, when we look at this brain stem structure and we turn it to the side, this is what it actually looks like and right behind it is the cerebellum so if we were to superimpose and draw the cerebellum here i'm just gonna go and do this it'll look something like that and there we go all right so just imagine that this is the little cauliflower structure that we're talking about here and when we talk about the cerebellum now what happens if this artery supplies the cerebellum along with many other structures you're going to get symptoms that uh, you would get if you had infarction of the cerebellum. That's why you have ataxia. That's why you have vertigo. And let's continue. Wallenberg syndrome. Now, what is it? It's lateral, medula, lateral medullary syndrome. It's the lateral side of the medulla that is involved. And the lateral side has which nerves? Cranial nerve 9, cranial nerve 10, and cranial nerve 11. Don't forget that. That's going to help you guys get the symptoms correct in this case, right? If you know pica is affected over here, all right, you know that it's going to involve a little bit of the cerebellum and a little bit of the base of the medulla and involve these nerves. What else you get? Ataxia vertigo, duh, because you get cerebellar involvement. What else? Nystagmus, ipsilateral facial, and contralateral trunk loss uh, of the pain and temperature. Why do you get pain and temperature loss? Think about it. Good day. If you don't know, now you know. It's because you have spinal thalamic tract involvement here as well. You remember the sign of spinal thalamic tract? Remember that little uh, uh, tract in the spinal cord that goes from the spine into the thalamus? That's why you have pain and temperature sensation that is missing when you have a, a affected pica syndrome because it involves a little bit of the spinal thalamic tract as well but it mostly happens on the contralateral limbs and the ipsilateral face. That's where you're gonna get these symptoms. All right, cranial nerve never, 11 is involved, so you, accessory nerve is involved. Cranial nerve 10, that's the vagus nerve. All right, let's talk about this one a little bit. The vagus nerve, when we look at the tongue, here's the tongue, guys. I drew it out here for you so you guys could actually understand what's happening. When we look at the tongue, we are talking about, in this specific, um, picture we're talking about the tongue and the taste involvement this is cranial nerve 7 which basically innervates the frontal two-thirds of the tongue cranial nerve 9 innervates the posterior one-third of the tongue for taste and cranial nerve 10 innervates the back part of the tongue that's why taste is lost at cranial nerve 10 innervation sites and cranial nerve 9 innervation sites also you have the loss of gag reflux and some patients you also see palatal myoclonus or twitching of the back of the mouth in these patients so if you have stroke of the pica which is uh, by the way i think it's one of the most common stroke syndromes that you can get it's called wallenberg syndrome you basically get uh remember the mnemonic don't pike a horse that can't eat and is walking into walls in vegas all right if that mnemonic can help you great it helped me now we talk, move on to cranial nerve nine. Cranial nerve nine is right here. It involves the taste portion of the posterior, one third of the tongue. So if you have infarction of cranial nerve nine, you're gonna lose the taste back here too. It's the glossopharyngeal nerve, so you get a little bit of the gag reflex is deficient too. You get symptoms of dysphagia. 
that's usually due to ipsilateral bulbar symptoms. All right. Also, you get something called, something called Horner syndrome. You guys remember that? Ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. Ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis. That's Horner syndrome, and that's usually ipsilateral uh, in its origin. Now, let's talk a little bit about this image right here. Here, you guys, you can see the vertebral artery going up, joining the basal artery. Same thing here, vertebral artery going up, joining the basal artery. Here comes the pica, and here comes the pica. You, as you can see, the pica goes all the way back to the cerebellum. All right, so if you have infarction, let's say right here, you are going to infarct the spinal thalamic tract that's running through this going all the way up to the thalamus. You are going to infarct the spinal cerebellar tract right here. This is why you have symptoms of vertigo and ataxia as well. And along with that, I think we're going to wrap this up. This was Wallenberg syndrome, aka lateral medullary syndrome. Pike has affected. Make sure you guys check out uh, the other stroke video if you haven't already. And see you guys next time.